What's up guys, Ryan here from Mudgunner. Today I wanted to talk about how to disassemble the Chris Vector. So I have mine here, it's chambered in 45, it's the enhanced model, which means it has the six and a half inch barrel, but this disassembly should work for all the models out there. But yeah, let's kind of get into it. So before we get into it, I'll make sure it's clear. I am running Federal HST, which is an amazing self-defense round. And then I have it in the Chris Vector magazine. So this is the factory extension on a Glock 21 mag. So it's 30 rounds of 45, which is pretty crazy. And then as far as clearing it, what's cool about the Vector is on the charging handle, if you just pull this back, it actually press checks the bolt, which is very cool because you don't have to pull it all the way back. Just moving it moves the bolt back just slightly enough. And if there was a round in the chamber, you would see the brass or copper plating or steel case if you're poor. Just kidding, steel case is fine, but I don't run it because I don't like it. But yeah, pulling that back lets you press check it and then you can still rack it all the way. So the Vector is very cool. It's an iconic sub gun. It's been in tons of video games, but yeah, so far I've really enjoyed it. I've been running it suppressed recently and it's pretty dirty. So let's show you how to take it apart. It's got four takedown pins here and they are not captured. So these will come all the way out of the gun and you can put them in from either side. I don't necessarily have a preference. This is just how I have mine right now. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take these three pins apart and that's gonna separate the upper and the lower. So all you do is push them and you're gonna pull them out from the other side. They're pretty easy to take out. So I'm just gonna pull all three of these out. Again, they are not captured, so they will pop right out, kind of like an HK. They even look like HK pins, but I'm not sure if they're compatible or not. And then once you pull those three out, your upper and lower will separate. And the upper is not the firearm, technically. The lower is the firearm. So these you can buy different uppers. I mean, I don't know the exact reasoning for it, maybe changing the back end or different trigger groups or whatnot. What's crazy is your hammer is up here. And on most guns, the hammer sits down low and it hits it like this. On this, the upper hits downwards. So it strikes the firing pin from the top going down versus down going up, which I think is pretty crazy. So it is kind of nasty in there. And then the lower, again, is the firearm portion. This is what has the serial number. I'll show you that press check again. Got my dog's hair right here. So if I pull back, which doesn't require a lot of force, it pulls the bolt back just slightly out of battery, but it's not like on some guns, if you try to just press check it, it might stay out of battery. On a Chris Vector, it just automatically goes forward, which is pretty cool. And then you can pull the bolt all the way back. And what's interesting on the vector is the recoil impulse is down because the bolt travels down right here. It kind of follows this line and it sends the recoil down versus straight back, which I think is very interesting on these guns. And to take the rest of this out, you just have one more pin right here. So I'm gonna push that out and then your bolt comes out of the bottom and your recoil spring. So if you watch this, I'm gonna pull it down and you'll see it, it just falls down. And that is how the gun recoils is straight down. So crazy system. It's kind of one of a kind. I don't know of any other gun that does this, but yeah, it comes straight out the bottom. And again, mine's really dirty, but once you have it out, this is how the assembly is. All you do is twist and your bolt comes right out of the carrier. It's kind of interesting. So bolt carrier group. So that's your carrier and that's your bolt. And it's a very, unique little bolt and it's honestly pretty simple very easy to clean so on a lot of bolts it's uh you basically have a full circle so you normally have to take the extractor off to kind of clean it good but this one you can get up under the extractor very easily because it's just like a little half cut bolt right here but that is basically the whole disassembly of the chris vector super simple they look like they'd be more complicated as far as the carrier goes i just wipe it down really well and oil the spring you can even clean the rod up in there by pressing it through. And you see mine is pretty dirty right now. Focus. So yeah, mine's pretty dirty right now. You can see it all over my hands, but yeah, super simple system. And I really enjoy it. I've never had any issues with this. And mine would be considered like a gen two or three because they did change something on the 2017 models. I don't know um, what issues people were running to, into before that. I believe this gun originally came out as a 45 and then they started doing other caliber. So I don't know what issues some people had, but 
I do believe early ones may have had some malfunctions, but with mine, I probably have, I'd guess six-ish hundred rounds through it, which is a lot of money in 45, but the last couple hundred rounds have been suppressed and unsuppressed, but it's been running really well. I'm going to wipe it down real fast and then I'll put it back together for you guys. So I'm just going to pause it. All right. I got everything wiped down pretty decently. So I'm going to put it back together now. I'm going to start, let's see, I'm going to start with the lower and honestly, again, super easy to take apart and disassemble. I'm going to just put some oil on the track here. This bottle is almost out. I may have to get another one. Oh yeah. It's running dry. So I got oil in the track there. I'm going to put just a little bit more on the bolt carrier or the bolt and the bolt carrier. So I'll try to do this closer, but just the moving parts. So you can see where it starts to turn silver on uh, gun parts. That's normally your oiling point. So just putting it around the bolt there. And yeah, this bottle's like empty. I'm going to get another bottle here in a sec. But putting it back in, just twist it that way. And you want to make sure your extractor is facing kind of up and out. And then as far as putting it back in the track here, it's easiest if you just kind of do this upside down. So your bolt is going to fall into this first slot. So your bolt's going to fall into this first slot right here. And you just got to make sure those front uh, pins fall in line and then same thing with these back pins here and then this rail will fall into this back groove right here and it all kind of just goes in line together just like that super slick and now I can put this front pin back so I'm just going to push this straight down right there now your bolt's captured. And then as easy as it is, you just put this together and line up all three pins again. I'm just gonna put a drop of oil on the firing pin spring here, or not the firing pin spring. I'm gonna put a drop of oil on the hammer spring here. If there's any left in this bottle. Well, got a little bit. So just let, line it all up. And that's it, that's the whole thing. So we'll put these pins back in. My dog is barking in the background to go outside, so don't mind him. And that is the entire assembly and disassembly of the Chris Factor. Super simple. So thank you guys for watching and stay tuned for my next video.